Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has appealed to the country's highest court, requesting an audit of the presidential election after opposition leaders challenged his claim of victory, according ABC News. Maduro said that Venezuela's ruling party is ready to present all documents related to the election vote count. I throw myself before justice. I am willing to be summoned, questioned, investigated, Maduro said outside the Supreme Court building in Caracas. Maduro agreed to a first step toward election transparency, but the court that will review the results is closely linked to his government. Judges are appointed by federal officials and confirmed by the National Assembly, where Maduro's supporters hold the majority. The Carter Center, which monitored the elections, criticized this move, arguing that the court would not provide an independent review of the elections. The Atlanta-based group stated that they were unable to verify the announced election results in Venezuela. They criticized the complete lack of transparency during the announcement of Maduro's victory. Electoral authorities allowed the Carter Center to send 17 observers. Maduro's main opponent, Edmundo Gonzalez, and opposition leader Maria Corina Machado claim they received more than two-thirds of the tally sheets, indicating Maduro's defeat. Venezuela's election commission announced that Maduro won 51 percent of the vote, continuing socialist rule. However, polls indicated an opposition victory. Protests demanded that Maduro concede defeat. International observers and the Carter Center stated that the vote did not meet international standards for fairness. Following the recent losses sustained by the Wagner Group in Mali, the Kremlin will need to undertake a large-scale replacement of its mercenaries in Africa with soldiers from the Russian Defense Ministry's African Corps. Meanwhile, part of this corps has recently been redeployed to the Kharkiv region to support the offensive actions of the occupying forces according to the Institute for the Study of War. Several prominent Russian military bloggers critical of the Kremlin claim that the Russian Defense Ministry is taking pleasure in the Wagner Group's losses and suggest that the Russian military leadership may use this incident as a pretext to halt the deployment of Wagner mercenaries in the Sahel and fully replace them with units from the African core of the Russian Ministry of Defense. Some Russian bloggers have cited an unnamed source within Putin's administration indicating that the personnel of the African Corps will replace Wagner forces across the Sahel trio, Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. The Institute for the Study of War speculates that the African Corps may currently lack the capacity to adequately replace the Wagner Group, especially in Mali, as elements of the Corps were recently deployed to Ukraine to participate in offensive operations in the northern Kharkiv region. Supplanting Wagner at scale following losses such as those accrued in the recent ambush would likely involve redeploying some African Corps fighters to Mali away from the front line in Ukraine and the Russian military command likely does not see completely supplanting Wagner in Mali or elsewhere in the Sahel as a priority effort at this time, the ISW report states. On July the 27th, Tuareg rebels from the CSP-PSD movement showcased photos and videos of a destroyed Wagner convoy in Mali. The fighting took place in the town of Tinswatan near the Mali-Algeria border on July the 25th and 26th. At least 20 Wagner fighters were killed and those who survived the battle were taken prisoner. The Defense Intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine has announced the continuation of successful actions against Russian war criminals from the Wagner Group in Africa.